Ladies and gentlemen, our audience, real estate investors are not always quick to give you their secrets to success. You know, if they train you, you know, you become their competition, especially if you're in their market. Uh, and with the scarce investment opportunities out there, you know, they would rather you not know about it. <laughs> you know, less competition, the better. Uh, but the ones that are eager to share their knowledge with you usually has some sort of strings attached. You know, hey, uh, I'll give you a little bit, but buy my book, subscribe to my training program, or hire me to be your coach or something like that. But uh, today there's four real estate investors around this table. They're going to give you some of their personal insights into real estate investing, four different methods. Okay. We're going to talk about buy and hold investments, you know, rentals, income properties. Uh, we're going to move on into talking about uh, short-term rentals like Airbnbs. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about the flipping game, flipping houses. And then we'll cap it all off with some wholesaling. Okay. So before we get started, let's do some introductions and go around the table. I'm Rob Kyleman. I'm your co-host here on Real Estate Talk Podcast, real estate agent slash investor. And with me always is my companion here. Yeah, Joshua Britt. How you doing? <laughs> okay. Also investor agent. And uh, we have uh, Karen Tyler. She is a broker, owner, and investor. Uh She's got so many titles, it would be another podcast to talk about her. <laughs> <Facts>. so, <laughs> and uh, we also have Sierra Alderman, an Airbnb guru. Guys, mm -hmm. welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, Tyler, so we'll just go ahead and start off with buy and hold investments, rentals. Um, how many rental properties do you own? Roundabout. Um, about 78 doors, I think. 78 properties? Oh, that's a lot. I probably should it know is. exactly, but I don't. Yeah. Is that all residential or? Mm, nope. I've got residential long-term um, uh, holds. That's my retirement plan. Uh, a couple commercial buildings um, and uh, some uh, short-term rentals. That Sierra takes care of for me, thank God, because I don't have the time. <laughs> she does such a good job. So, um, But, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Um but uh, yeah, mostly um, um, long-term holds. Oh, that's cool. So go family townhouses. Yeah. Do you remember your first ever Absolutely. property? I will never forget. <laughs> <laughs> How did that go? <laughs> How did you get the stones to make the move? <laughs> uh, peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, my best friend. She was in, she was a baby investor, and I was a baby. Um, real estate agent and everything we just had so much energy and we would just like feed off of each other and learning this real estate thing and everything it was hmm. awesome and um one day she says uh tyler we got to get you a rental property and i was hmm. like uh -uh. No, no 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 if somebody messes up my house i don't know what i'll do i i don't want to deal with that at all and uh she goes what are you gonna do in 20 years from now i'm like I don't know what I'm doing next week. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm trying to be grown and all, right? I think I'm in my 30s. or um, So I was playing around at home, um, messing on HUD, HUDHomestore.com, bidding on a property in Virginia Beach that they were never going to accept that. Is that like where foreclosures are at for yes. everybody out there? I know what it is, but yes. just make sure everybody gotcha. else knows. Gotcha. Yep. So, um, yeah, so that became my thing. You end up getting addicted to it, I guess. <laughs> because, you know, imagine like a guy screaming at the Packers or something. That's like me on an auction site <laughs> I'm out of my computer. And then, you know, the auction it gets down to like, you know, 60 seconds or 30 seconds. And if somebody else bids, it goes for another five minutes. You're like, ah! So clear, the, uh, clear your schedule, if you will. But, um, but no, uh, I was bidding on a HUD home store uh, property foreclosure. And uh, it was a single-family home, three-bedroom, two-bath, with an att attached garage in, uh, in Virginia Beach. So I'm, um, you know, offering just under a hundred grand. They're never going to say yes to that, and um, they they did not say yes to that. So I was like, fine, a hundred and three. That's it. It was so stupid, and I think I got it at a hundred and seven <laughs> at the end of the day. But I was like, I just assumed, I just knew that somebody was going to outbid me. Yeah. But they well, never showed up. How, how did you get the money to buy your first investment property? Was Daddy rich and gave you a bunch of money? <laughs> well, if he's rich, he hasn't told me yet. <laughs> Dad? Um, no, um, um, I got into real estate, uh, selling houses. Um, um, I actually 
I got a job helping to buy land in 2007. Got my real estate license in 2008. Um, sold a house in 2008. And then my brokerage closed down because the market was crashing. And yeah. mm-hmm. I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> and <Yeah>. So... I, <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. All I know, and, you know, I asked my broker, you know, he moved to Texas. I was like, well, what do I do? <laughs> you know? And uh, so he made a couple of suggestions. And um, and uh, it turns out uh, I was pretty good at real estate. Yeah. Um, I just loved it. And I got I got so excited. And I just loved helping the people and everything. And um, I wasn't even worried about the money. I just love the fact that at the end of the day, somebody was so happy because mm-hmm. I found all the stuff that they were looking for, not all of it, but just, you know, I'd help check most of the boxes yeah. and uh, help them build their empire, and I loved it. Um, and uh, I sold 54 houses my first year in 2009. Wow. I was just saving nice. up that money. <laughs> so yeah. on the heels of the, on the heels of the uh, collapse, you did 54 houses. Uh, well, I guess everybody was getting out of the business. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'll take them. Yeah. So, yeah. Somebody um, had to sell my house. Yeah, and I was call, text, email, repeat. I don't... I'm not one to live off, you know, uh, the government. I, mean, I had an ex-boyfriend try to teach me how to uh, get uh, an employment. And I was like, that's just, no, no, no. I love to work, you know. So um, so I just, because my first closing, there goes my fees. And there goes my split with my brokerage. And um, I didn't have any money left. So I'm like, I'm going to have to do that again. <laughs> so, yeah. so, and they wanted to close in like two weeks. I'm like, no, nah, 30 days is typical. No, we have to close in two weeks. I'm like, Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay, let's go. And uh, so I just kept going. And, um, you know, I, w- I wasn't dating anybody. I didn't have any kids at the time. So I was able to eat, sleep, breathe, everything. Mm-hmm. I would sleep with my phone and for rings at like 10 30. Like, is it an uh, extended warranty or is it <laughs> wants to buy a house? So, um, yeah, I just loved it. And I wanted to make everybody a real estate agent as well because I just mm-hmm. wanted everybody to have what I had because it was just fun. It was fun to help people. Um, and, uh, so did, did you buy that first house cash? No. Oh. No. Um, no, because I, you know, I tried to, I was <laughs> never the smartest person in the room. But um, so I was always trying to listen to the people around me and everything. And I was joining as many groups and everything that was real estate related. And um, so I did a 20% down conventional investment nice. loan. Nice. And, um, you know, still fixed rate, 30 years. And so 20% of $107,000. Yeah. And then I put three grand into it. If you sold 54 houses and you, you know, that, that first year and then 78 the next year, if you didn't have a couple bucks left over, you're in big trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I would think. Um, but uh, so that's how I started. And so then my goal was to sell as many houses as I could to build up the capital to put down a down payment again. Hmm. So you just kept, kept the process going. Yep. Sell some houses, buy another one, sell some houses, buy another one. Now, did you start out managing it all yourself? Yes, my my friend that encouraged me to get the first rental property, she's the one that that told me uh, in September. She told me that um, now if you're gonna if you're gonna um, have these rental properties, you got to manage them yourself because if you have a management company do it, well, you got to know you know what they're supposed to do so you can check yeah. and make sure they're doing what you're paying them to do. I'm like, I really didn't want to because I just wanted to sell houses, but I respected her so much, you know, and and she's a great ment- mentor and everything. So I'm glad I listened to her, but I'm also glad that. I don't manage them myself directly anymore. Yeah, like for those who are out there listening, like what what's like an amount of homes that you feel like somebody, an individual could manage themselves without having to hire an outside service? I mean, that completely depends on like like their day-to-day process, you know, what kind of jobs they have, you know, or because um, sometimes, I mean, you, you'll you get an emergency call at whenever. And you, like if it's a water, if, if it's something that's an owner responsibility, you need to be able to take care of it right away. Um like, you know, water heater, you know, uh, breaking, uh, roof leaking, you know, stuff like that, you know, or have the resources to send somebody to help uh, immediately, you know. Um, so it really just depends on your know-how of houses in general. Um, in my opinion, it's, it's better to just have somebody else manage it, um, but to know what the responsibilities are, you know, and so expectations on both sides, you know, what, what's expected of you as an owner and them as, a, as the management company. Okay, nice. Where is there was there ever any fear trying to get into the investment thing? Because some people out there might be thinking, oh, "I want to get a rental one day. I want to get income ro- property." I watched that HGTV show, and mm-hmm. it's terrifying. <laughs> is it to this day? I, when I go to an auction, I might put my hand up. 
I am. My, my, my adrenaline's going crazy. It's terrifying because um, for so many different reasons, they, you might win the bid. <sighs> now what? You know, um, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, but um, yeah, no, it, it's it's certainly scary. You don't, you don't know what kind of tenants, Dis, despite how how strictly they've been screened or something. You know, some people are really good at you know sales. You know, and uh, they're going to come off as really good people. And you're like, man, I want them to live in my house. They're going to take care of it. Then <laughs> 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 they don't. Yeah. Uh, I did that. I fell for um, the, <laughs> I fell for this kid because I, I joined like a Facebook group or something with um. Uh, regarding rentals and everything when we started the property management company. So I just wanted to make sure I was everywhere and see what people needed, wanted, and what they were saying. And this guy, he just seemed so sweet and so genuine. And uh, he's like, show me a house in Virginia Beach for rent for under 1700 a month and all of something. I don't even remember. I was like, I I got one. No, you don't. I'm like, Are you the owner of your company? I'm like, well, I mean, I own the property management company, but I, I own this particular house, so we, what are you asking me exactly? <laughs> um, but uh, he had an autistic kid. It was so sweet. It was such a cute family, and they had a really wonderful story. They had to move in with his parents, and it went on and on and on. Next thing I know, <laughs> my uh, pest control company is saying I've never seen so many roaches oh. in one house oh, in, in my life. You just wasn't clean it? or uh, No, it was awful. It was They were just bad people. Oh and, man, they just wouldn't take you never, care of So things. the parents ended up moving into this house as well. Oh. Um, and it was so dirty and I mean the living conditions and then the worst part is they knew the system so we would try to you know use the legal system to get them out you know and with procedures that we were supposed to follow and everything. They knew everything to do to circumvent those situations to get an extension or this and, and I have a judgment against them but. Still? Yeah, and then uh, so I mean, oh man, how long I mean, has this been going on? Oh no, no, no! Like meaning, um, so so I got them out eventually, and but I don't know where they're at. Yeah. But we got you know the judge gave us you know awarded us you know judgment, uh, but <laughs> Good you don't luck know where they are. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. and I record my judgments, which just means that they're enforced for a longer period of time. Um, and uh, so should this guy ever get his stuff together and maybe buy a property and then go to sell it? He's going to see me again. But the problem with that is he's probably going to see all these other creditors as well. You yeah. know, so so I don't think I'll ever see anything. But it, it just it broke my heart so much because I'm like, I'll give you a chance, buddy. You know, and, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I really believed in his story and his family and everything. Oh, they were bad. They were bad people. Now, I think now for me, that would probably be hard because I'm a person. I feel like I, I have like, you know. A good heart for people. I do too. And so, like, if somebody came to me with a sad too. story, I'd mm -hmm. be like, "All right, here, just take it all. You can have it, right?" Yes. So, like, do you have people who try to come to you with that, like, "Oh, you know, we're we're going to be a few months, you know, a few days late, or we're not going to be able to make rent this month"? <laughs> like, does that happen a lot? I would imagine with that many houses. It, it depends. I, well, yeah, um, it, to a degree. Some people are just set it and forget it, and they're fine, they're great, and they're wonderful, and they call you when there's an a legit issue. Uh, some people they're going to test you and see how far they can take it. Okay, mm. they, they they fell for that. Okay, this month we're going to try this, you know. And um, and if you allow that, so it sucks too because uh, like I don't want to be a bitter person. Yeah. I don't want to not believe you, and you're the one that I really should be helping <laughs> because you are genuine and you're doing everything that you should to make those steps. Um, so I I try to make sure that I don't become that bitter person, and I still want to help the people. That um that really deserve the help, and I'm not always gonna know who that is. Mm. Sometimes you just take a chance. Yeah. What about the maintenance of the properties? Like, how do you like keep track of all that? Like, I don't. The software <laughs> that they have. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, um. So I mean, it's really hard because then when we move in a family or something, we literally do the eye contact thing. This is your air filter. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you change it. I need you to look at me right now and yeah. let me know that you know that you got to change this thing. Because if I come back here and I want to like name it something because it's so hairy, <laughs> I'm going to charge you for the service call on the HVAC. You know, mm -hmm. like there's certain mm -hmm. things. You know, and I'll we'll explain. This is part of your lease. This is what you're agreeing to. See, it says right there, and they say. Got it. No problem. You know, you do the move-in inspection, and then hands down, I think the quarterly inspections is everything, because you know somebody can really mess up a house in a short amount of time. So, 
um, the inspections help determine if they're going to. Do pets mess them up pretty bad? Sure. Or is people more than pets? (laughs) Everybody's got a 30 pound lab mix that (laughs) (laughs) will not do anything. Totally potty trained. Don't worry. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why it smells like you have 10, you know, 100 uh, pound dogs in here. Um, cats. I mean, uh, so I mean, I, I love animals. You know, I, ha- yeah. I have several animals. You know, I love them, but I really hope that my house doesn't smell like. I'm going to need somebody else to come over and check because sometimes you do get a like nose blind. <laughs> yeah. You walk in, you're like, do you not smell that tenant? Like, like you live here, you don't smell that? Yeah. Um, it's pretty, yeah. That nose blind commercial has has really resonated with me. <laughs> so those are long term rentals. What do you think about you? Got, you have some uh, Airbnb type <laughs> properties, short term rentals. What do you think of those? I mean, sometimes people bring their cats there too, right, Sierra? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got our Airbnb guru here, Sierra. Let's talk about some of these uh, yeah. this Airbnb stuff. Oh my god, Brand I'm dying couch. to hear oh about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they didn't. Sierra so good. She didn't even tell me what I found out like a month later or something. And it, oh my god, it was so bad. She didn't even tell me the worst. What happened to my property? I I mean I'm honestly you're talking about the cats for which which one turtle for turtle oh with, yeah with the mattress and everything the couch had to yes. be thrown out the couch the, this cat would pee on the couch and this this is a condo that allows no pets I okay. mean. Like so, we had no idea. Of course, we don't even ask if they are bringing pets because there's no pets allowed. But uh, yeah, I mean, your your unit was completely destroyed. We got just pictures on pictures on pictures from the cleaner, which already is just like, oh no. And just it was a fold out bed, like mm. a fold, you know, pull out couch that just had just <laughs> urine stains all over. And it was oh, you know the clear difference between human urine and cat <laughs> urine. And um, so we had to quickly figure out how to get a couch out of there and in a couch immediately. And the turnovers with Airbnb, of course, is like 11 a.m. Mm. and 4 p.m. And so mm. uh, that was a fun time. Yeah. 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 I got a question for you, though, because I've been considering this. I'm like, you know, getting very close to pulling the trigger on and doing this Airbnb <laughs> thing. Right. So, like, what are the startup costs that are involved with, you know, turning a house into an Airbnb? Yeah, of course, as anybody would say, it's totally dependent, right, on the house and mm-hmm. on on the even the market and things like that. But, um, you know, approximately, yeah. you know, like a three bedroom, two bedroom, two bath house uh, can run you anywhere. I did mine on Facebook Marketplace for I mm-hmm. think it was 10 to 11 K. And that was really cheap. That was going on U-Haul, like getting Facebook Marketplace deals. Uh, so probably Scary situation. This is for yeah. like the furniture and stuff. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm talking about furniture, getting getting the yeah. house furnished for Airbnb. Um, so approximately 10 to 15K. Of course, if you hire out, um, and you know, or if you do high-end furnishings, this is a pretty basic place. You can get up to 20K even just doing it yourself. Um, hiring out, you can get all the way to 50K for, yeah, no. you know. I want to meet it, those people. I've got something to sell you. them. Yeah. But no, yeah. it's like when you're doing a, a flip, right? Yeah. yeah. You don't, you're not going to live there. So yep. you, you do you make it look beautiful, mm-hmm. but you're not, you know, you can do that mm-hmm. at a more cost-effective rate, mm-hmm. you know, rather than just splurging. So, but right. I still want to meet those people that right. pay 50 grand. Yeah. And, and Tyler, do you have any insight into your places? Like, is that, you know, cause it also, she has her places a lot in Florida. Um, oh, yeah. And so of course, even, even that does depend on some of the furniture costs and startup costs. Well, I like, I, I'm a huge fan of Amazon. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I like to contribute to, I like to help people move, you know, cause I'm in uh, home sales. Oh, you're going to move. Hold on. Let me order some stuff so I can get you some boxes. Mm-hmm. I got you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've learned to, you know, find out which prices to look for and what's going to last a little bit longer or if you're buying in bulk and everything, but then you got to have some place to keep everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, so, I mean, and, but, and you guys order so much stuff that I don't even mm. know about. Yeah. And then when I'm talking to the house cleaner or the housekeeper or whatever, and um, oh, yeah, so I got this and this. I'm like, do I do I owe you money? Oh, no, 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 Sierra took care of it. I'm like, do I owe her money? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody owe. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Sierra just sends me a check every month. I'm like, okay, okay thanks. Cool. Whatever. So now you're doing them in Florida and up here as well. Mm-hmm. Is there any, like, regulations? Yes. Like, how does Like, how does that all work? It's city dependent. Either one of you can answer that. For, one. for fees here, we'll walk you through it. <laughs> Me, I did it as a favor and to, to learn um, 
like we had to go to uh, a civic league meeting. Well, I'm a member of the Willie B. Spit. I'm a spitter now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so we had to go. We had to go to the, the local municipality, you know, the civic league. And I think I think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're trying to see if they want you to be voted in. Like they want the civic league to yeah. accept you. Correct. But even if, if they don't, you still say, I still win. I tried. So then they'll it'll schedule you for city hall. So then you go to City Hall to get a um, permit. I think it's a little bit different in Hampton, right? Yeah. Everybody's a little bit different. Yeah. And we've That's yeah. Hampton, Virginia. Correct. Yeah, sure. so you, you definitely got to check the rules because they're probably yeah. different here than in Florida and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. much so. Your, your Florida <laughs> process was much easier. You pretty much get a business license. Have you seen that house yeah. that I had to tear down? Yeah. <laughs> Get an Airbnb, they said. It would be great, they said. So my first one, <laughs> that's why I got my license in Florida, because I'm like, lady, you don't know what you're doing. Not Sierra, but the lady, yeah. the agent that I was referred to, yeah. uh, you cannot uh, Airbnb there. I'm like, fine, I'll just renovate it and make it in, into a duplex. Oh, no, 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 you, can, you can't multifamily. Fine, I'll make it like, uh, the, what is it, the traveling nurses or yeah, whatever? Yeah, midterm. Yeah, I right. can't do that there either. So what did you do with it? Well, I was going to rehab it and just sell it and get it out of it and you know start over. No, 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 I can't do that either because it, because it was a hoarder house. Those are one of my favorites. Because uh, I just try to think of the psychology, like, how did you get here? <laughs> but um, so I'm just going to clean it up, you know, rehab it, sell it, no problem. Mm-mm. Now, if the city deems the, the value um, of the property, um, the, the amount of work that you're going to do to it, if it's more than 50% of the current value of the home, and they check, and they have like Class A contractors that check your numbers. Um, you have to tear it down. Oh wow! There seems to be a lot about these Airbnb properties. A lot of people don't know about some of these. Yeah, uh, I trusted the agent would know. And yeah, they did not. That was a hand grenade right there in your plan. Six blocks away, I have an Airbnb. Yeah, yeah, and no problem. I mean, except for when it floods. Right. Every, every <laughs> oh oh God! Wow. I don't times. want to do an Airbnb. So what ended up happening to the property? <laughs> Oh, so, <laughs> so the Is one he I had just to check down. No, so um, there, there was a guy building a house like a block away on on the Gulf. So I asked the uh, Airbnb this is in cleaning Florida, lady. Right? Yeah, okay. I asked uh, it's Reddington Beach, and I asked the lady. I was like, "Can you get that guy's number for me?" Because I'm up here in Virginia Beach, yeah. and she sends it to me. I'm like, "Hey, man, I do a little bit of new construction up here. I dabble, and uh, can you have a look at this lot? Here's my situation and everything. I was wondering if you could give me a price to build it." So now I'm just thinking I'm just gonna build something and sell it because whatever I'll I'll move on and try again. Um, so he goes, yeah, I'll check it out. He calls me back that afternoon. He goes, yeah, I could probably get you five, six, four. I'm like, screw you, dude. I paid four hundred thousand for it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, honey, five or six million. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> how much? Would, how much would it cost to buy to build said five, six million dollar resale home? And he's like, you know, two and a half, three. I'm like. What idiot would give me that kind of money? I found him. <laughs> so I got a construction loan. Um, it's just about complete, and we just listed it for six point nine nine five. Oh my god! Wow, <laughs> it's gorgeous. Oh, hey. I know. I'm so terrified. It's got to sell. But I mean, I think we need. I'll need to go down with the uh, bean bags or you know yeah, the, the yeah. camping gear. And just, yeah. It's it's a beautiful home. It the is. guy does an amazing, stellar job. Yeah. You might need to enjoy that just one night you before know, you sell it. I say let's all go down and just like <laughs> yeah. Everyone. There's a rooftop terrace. You can oh, see, wow. yeah, you can nice. see the Gulf on one side, and then the intercoastal waterways on the other. Mm. Who doesn't want to buy that house? Anybody six point nine nine five. Madeira Beach, Florida. <laughs> yes. So yeah. All yeah. right. So here's here's another question for you. So obviously you got Airbnbs in Florida. The prices are probably going to be a lot different in Florida than even say Virginia Beach. How do you go about determining the prices? I think this might be more for you, Sierra. Yeah, Yeah, so, I mean, it's multi-factor, of course, but I have a a software primarily that I use called Price Labs. Um, But in addition, of course, we're taking into account um, other properties that are nearby, um, similar to a real estate agent that's checking comps. Um, she doesn't mean call the real estate agent because most of them down there don't know no, how yeah. to run comps. Yeah, no, and I mean, yeah, it is different. It's not like you have an MLS, like you're looking on Airbnb. You're Shout out to all the agents in Florida. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Price Labs is pretty incredible because it, 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 evaluates all of that and also takes into account even this you know micro like this January looks different than last January, especially actually in Florida. Is that the Air DNA? 
No, it's a different one. Yeah, this one is called Price Labs. Air DNA is another software that we sometimes use as well. Is that something that anybody could get or? Yeah, Air DNA. There's they have a free. I think. No, this new one. Uh huh. Oh, the... Price Labs. Yeah, Price Labs. Anybody can get. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's like seven dollars per property or something. It's really cheap, but they have great data. Great data, and you can see years. You know, you have like all the graphs. It's it's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> just on the macro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like an yeah. engineer. I know, I know. I just sit at my computer and just get, <laughs> get, but even you know, this January is different than last January, and in, in Florida in particular, uh, Florida did get kind of oversaturated, uh, even in this past year. I know, I know. Um, but I that's, know. Well, I flooded twice. Yeah. Oversaturated. <laughs> oh, I flooded twice. Yeah, literally and otherwise. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so but, wait a minute. When you say saturated, you mean there's like too many people doing Airbnbs there's, there's, right now? There's there's a lot of homes in Florida. Correct. In Florida. Yes. Yeah. And and we'll get to talking about this, I'm sure. But you know, when we're talking about this business license, it's very easy to get potentially. And then here in Norfolk, where it might take nine months to get a permit, there are some benefits um, because people don't want to yeah. take nine months to get a permit. The but pe but the owners that do are seeing the the profit. So anyway. Um, all that being said, uh, Florida is different, of course, from here than than in. Um, so than basically, here. a low barrier to entry in yeah. Florida, but Correct. a very high barrier to entry here in the Hampton mm -hmm. Roads 100%. area of Virginia. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's yeah. really you got to put effort into it. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. you really have to want it. You yeah. know. So that could be dependent on location, like you guys were talking about the local mm -hmm. laws down there and mm -hmm. whatnot. Mm -hmm. So everybody well, out I have there, three condos that. in Treasure Island, Florida, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and um, they're all in the same um, complex. But it used to be owner occupy an owner could live there. The association just changed everything to you. Nope, you can only be short term. The people that lived there, they changed the changed the association rules and made them move out. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was like, how can they do so that? So the own association voted for this? Yes. The same people who live there. No, no, there was there's owners that live there, but they weren't necessarily yeah, but they weren't I didn't on board or that. mm hmm. Yeah. But don't the owners of the association they only had get a so vote? Much vote? Yeah, sure. So they just didn't show up, and then they got so, found out they got to well, leave. Most of the owners, no, no they live there. <laughs> they live there, but most of the owners of the the complex are out of town investors mm -hmm. that were doing short term oh. rentals. Okay. So they were voting for it. <sighs> I don't see the problem with having owner ox, but yeah, uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, that, that's probably a whole nother dynamic that yeah, nobody <laughs> even thought about. Because I would have never thought that there would be so many investors in one community that they that could actually could vote that. out the people who yeah. actually live there. Well, cause I, because I have the three units, I, I have a bigger vote, but it doesn't matter because over, I don't, do you remember how many units total in mm, Island? I want to say it's like uh, gosh, 60 know. or so. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I've got the equivalent of like 10, uh, 8%. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to get you anywhere, you know, if you're if you're going against the majority. And most people don't even vote because they don't care. So you got to watch yourself. They just want to get. Units. They want Sierra mm -hmm. to pay them a check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but they were also saying, trying to say that um, I had to use their management company mm -hmm. uh, for my short term rentals. I'm like, no, no, no. Let me explain something to you. <laughs> um, because when I bought when I bought that property, I hated and in the advertisement the MLS the, the bed spread the quilt was so horrible. I was like. Older than me. And I'm like, that's why you're not getting rentals. That's why you're not getting cash flow, because that looks ugly. And uh, and that was the first thing I got rid of. And and then we update the photos, and Sierra yeah. takes care of photos for you and everything. Yeah. And then, boom, you know, we're, we're making twice as much as what they were advertising you could make. Well, and nice. Tyler did this in a really incredible way, where she split up her <laughs> unit, basically. It was like a two-bedroom, two-bath. And she was like, hey, Sierra, I think we could do this as a studio and rent out two separate spaces. Like she basically bought one, you know, two bedroom, two bath, and we put it. You know, there was subdivided a, it. We subdivided it exactly. <laughs> yeah. and I mean, Think of a hotel with a connecting door. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and I mean, we nice. double insulated the door, so now you really can't hear much. You know, and that was all her idea. And, and now that thing is cash flowing like she crazy. advertises each individually uh -huh. and both as a whole. Yep. Wow. So it's three listings out of it. Exactly. So and somehow got, she keeps track of. <laughs> so if it's, if it's one condo, you got one door you walk in. Is there like a foyer, mm -hmm. and then you got two other doors? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Ah, exactly. I see. So people are sometimes a little like, but we explain it very well. And so that the was a turtle a to your genius left move and her. the seahorse to your right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the picture. Which one did you sign up for? Exactly. Got it. Exactly. Now, how difficult is it to manage the occupancy and make, and is there in like an ideal amount, you know, that you would want to yeah. keep, you know, how's all that yeah. play into it? Well, 
you know, anyone listening might say, well, 100% of course oh, it yeah. is, is obvious. But actually, I'm not looking for 100% because 100% tells me that it's too cheap. I'm not advertising it for enough. Um, so around 90%, 85 to 90% is what I'm what I'm striving for. We need to talk then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? Uh, this is an issue. <laughs> but my question is, how do you deal with uh-huh. the people that you know are just trying to get a deal, you know? Yeah, and they're going to yeah, complain yeah. about something right. when... right. Like, how do you determine what's an actual legit complaint and then not? Yeah. I mean, that's that's a big, big, you know, we, we've learned this over a long period of time. Um, it's hard because especially in the off season, you're trying to rent it for a rate that's uh, going to get people in the door, but at the same time is not going to have a party and trash your place. And mm-hmm. so, you know, we have that conversation with the owners before we start managing their property of, I would rather keep your place safe, you know, so I'm not going to give this property away for $20 a night and have, you know, someone in there that's going to destroy it. But at the same time, you know, we want to make sure that, uh, that yeah, you have occupancy, you have income. Um, and so it is a hard balance. Um, and so to answer your question, um, I think that... <laughs> <laughs> I like have a hard time remembering the question because I got so it's eight, You said it. You said yeah. eighty to eighty-five to ninety percent. Yeah. That's what yeah. you're striving yeah, yeah. for. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that she got you off okay, track. Sorry, sorry, but no, no, it's okay. I was like, wait. <laughs> but no, no, because that that's good because it leads into my next question that I have <laughs> is is because you were talking about like how do you know someone's not going to try to get yeah. over you? But what like I would imagine reviews play some sort yeah. in how I'm a super host client. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so what is what does that mean? What, is, what does it take to become a super <laughs> yeah. host? Yeah. Yeah. Like what does that mean? Yeah, it's it's four point eight stars or above, um, and you have a like not a ton of cancellations, basically um, a certain percentage. Um, and yeah, it takes it takes just making sure that your place is is up to par. That that when you check in, it is you know uh, clean and it is what is it advertised. You know we have accurate pictures. Um, and your response experience. time to questions and everything Correct. is outstanding. Yeah, Amazing. yeah. So yeah, whenever somebody asks a question, of course they expect a response. Not in you know twenty four business hours. You know they want it right then. Yeah. Um, so we have Instant a team gratification. to exactly yep. Yep. to handle that. You know, like and of course when you're They're looking like and scrolling, yeah, it's like leads. You know, when you're scrolling, you're scrolling through a lot. So you better capture that right. right away. Right. So you know, hey, is this you know. I don't know. Can you bring pets? Yes. You know what I mean? Instant response. So all that being said, yeah, Tyler is a super host. Her places are incredible. Um, And, (laughs) and yeah, she furnishes them very well. And um, nice job. And yeah, so that all definitely plays a part. Um, The reviews are really important. And even in the algorithm, I mean, it's not only important just for guest satisfaction, but it's keeping you relevant. So Airbnb is very strict about that criteria if you get a four star review you might go down to the fifth page of listings for a while oh. they're gonna Why go you ahead bring and up old shit i know right? <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna make sure that nobody's seeing you you know they want to promote the listings that are you know high um and there's more to that as well that's that's rearranging your photos that's changing your listing description that's you know all the things that is keeping you on that first page it's kind of an seo sort of play Keep it fresh. Oh. how many properties do you manage now i've got 50 I'm still around 50. how many states uh i have Four states, about to be five. She almost did Utah. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> she ran the numbers. She's like, nah, dude. No, I Tell your brother to just rent that out regular. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Don't you have property in Michigan too? Or are you doing Airbnbs in Michigan? <laughs> You're about to, right? I, al- I almost bought a house in Michigan on a lake. Um, but I opted not to because it's, it wasn't as advertised. But oh. it, and it was a horrible reason anyway. I wanted to show my in laws that you could, in fact, make money off the Airbnb and <laughs> near Grand Rapids and they didn't believe me. In it. I was like, well, I'll show you. And then I'm like, what am I doing? (laughs) So, yeah, that was dumb. But, I mean, I would have been able to accomplish my um, mission. All right. That's right. So what type of insurance do are you required to have on them? Like just a general liability or is there more to it? Like what does that all look like? Yeah. I mean, you're – you're not technically required to have like Airbnb does not require you to have, but we are requiring now a million dollar liability insurance. The city also requires million dollar liability insurance. Um, mm. And by the city, I mean, Virginia Beach and Norfolk specifically. They mean you mean Florida you, your company require? or the owner of the property or both? Well, both. Yes. So the, now I'm requiring the owner to carry a million dollar liability insurance. And then we are as well. Multiple insurance layers. Um, that, that's, are you sure? not that's not what your contract says. <laughs> well, 
Is that across states <laughs> that you, you should have a, a, a good insurance on it yeah. or something? Across mm. states, obviously. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. I mean, it's really important to have good insurance just generally. Um, but Air, Airbnb also does have their own. Well, and it's not going to be property specific. It's going to be Correct. for your company or anybody Correct. that's. Exactly. That's, so it's going to be. Exactly. A, General liability. General liability. Yeah, we're, we're covering all areas here. Now, Airbnb insurance, they have their own as well, that if anybody books on the platform, they're getting, um, I can't remember how much coverage, but I mean, it's a it's a hefty amount of insurance for if they're, you know, tearing your ha- house apart, which everybody's scared of parties, everybody's yeah. scared of, hmm. you know, what's going to happen if somebody gets in there, destroys my house. They might. And they might. Yeah. And they might. <laughs> yeah. And that's a risk of real estate investing yeah. in mm-hmm. general, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, There's always risk. Yeah, absolutely. And so luckily, Airbnb insurance actually has been very good for us. I would say probably 90, 90 to 95% of our claims have been paid out almost in full. <laughs> So mm-hmm. you make a lot of claims. Is that like mm-hmm. homeowner's insurance where it counts against you Mm-mm. when you're trying to get insured? Yeah, no, no. These claims that I'm talking about are on Airbnb specifically. Deductible? So none of uh no deductible. No. The when they book a stay on Airbnb, you can claim can through they do Airbnb. My homeowners <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, you can you can, you know, oh my pillow was ruined, my rug was ruined, you know, take pictures and all of that. Um they recently got smart about, you know, depreciation and things like that. Yeah, they just yeah. they just got around to that. So that's a normal yeah. wear and tear. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. They just got around to that. But in general, you know, I'd say ninety to ninety five percent of my claims have been paid out. In full, which has been great. You know, if my cleaners nice. have extra cleaning charges, no problem. Here you go. Um, so I've been generally impressed by Airbnb insurance. So will will tour? Oh, I'm sorry. Will um, Airbnb almost mm-hmm. said Toro? I know. <laughs> no, the, I remember Toro like, insurance. Yeah, but, but no. That so Airbnb, the Airbnb for cars. they will yeah, um, not do it. <laughs> they will reimburse you if there's like extra cleaning that's required, things like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if there's extra cleaning, if you know some. some Remember hosts, the cat couch. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All they of that was. They paid my cleaner. They bought me a new couch. I mean, and yeah. the couch wasn't that old, but depreciation or no, I'm quite sure they were going to get me a new couch. Right. It was right. that bad. Yeah, wow. and it I was, was just bad. glad I wasn't down there to smell it. Yeah, but yeah, they covered everything. You know, we just got the receipts. We submitted it to Airbnb, and they covered it. Um, so in general, they are covering most of our our claims. All right, I got one last question yeah. for you on this topic, right? So, I started Airbnb, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm doing this mostly for the people out there. If I was going to do it, I'd call you mm-hmm. and be like, "Hey, I need you to take care of this for me," right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yes. um, how do you market? Is it just you put it on Airbnb and hope? That it's, mm. you know, somebody rents it. Yeah. Do you partner with local people in the area? Like do you cross do you... platform like on yeah. Verbo or something? Yeah, exactly. So Verbo, um, Airbnb, also now Google Vacation Rentals, um, Furnished mm. Finder. We will do now. We're doing a lot more heavy midterm uh, stays. So 30 day plus is what we call midterm stays. Um, and so Furnished Finder is one of those platforms that's traveling nurses, that's sometimes DOD contractors, um, especially though insurance stays. So people that have water damage or whatever to their house, they need right now a 30 to 60, 90 day rental. Um, we are partnering with those companies um, and we're making a lot of connections in that space. Um, so right now we're, we're heavily focused for the short term market on Airbnb, VRB owned, Google Vacation Rentals, um, and then in the midterm space, furnished finder and, um, connections and local connections. Absolutely. I lied. I got one more yes, question. <laughs> 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 Just came up. So like, what is your like projection? Mm-hmm. Like, wait, will you, does, do you see Airbnb like being a long term thing or do you think this is going to fizzle out at some point? Yeah, I think, I think that's people's question of the day. Um, we had a big boom in, you know, 2021, 20, 2020, you know, everybody Pandemic started. Pandemic style. Yeah. People time. Like, oh, this is making money. A lot of people got into it at that time. So people are having that question of, is this going to stay around? I think the answer is yes. And I, I think that because people, people started traveling in a different way. I think when people go travel with their family, they're looking for a kitchen, they're looking for something right on the water. Um, you know, when they're, like you're having to get multiple hotels for your family, whereas you can get an Airbnb that's a lot more personal. So I do think these are here to stick around. Now, what I will say is the ones that have just th- in 2021, you could just throw a bed in a room mm. and take an iPhone picture. I think those are a lot more at risk. I think, <laughs> you know, we're now having the conversation of we need to update to king size beds. We need to, <laughs> we need to get dif- different photography. We need to get um, professional stagers in there. You know, things like that that are going to make you stand out. Game rooms. You know, things that are more themed, like 
like Disney themes, you know, like uh, places that are I've seen those. unique. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, yeah. I think it's starting to sound like straight up hotel management, like yeah. large scale hotel management that's sounding right. like. Because right. you're not th- talking about marketing meetings yeah. now. We're yeah. talking about yep. uh, amenities for the guests, Absolutely. so to speak. Absolutely. So. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game now. And in <laughs> the whole industry has completely changed even in the last three, four years, you know? I'm laughing because Sierra has taught me so much. You know? I mean, I can, I can. She sounds a, like she knows a lot. I can make yeah. a room look really pretty and everything. And she's like, good job, Tyler. <laughs> but <laughs> for whatever reason, I assume that everybody does that, you know, just like property management. Like, I, I like to sleep well at night. Like you rehab a beautiful home, right? Oh no, I, I stayed in Daytona, Airbnb, no problem. This guy, like, uh, he was told all. Here's the list of the stuff you have to have in an Airbnb, mm-hmm. and he went to like a garage sale and got in front of everything. Like it was awful, you know. And like, yeah. it, was, it was, it was just bad. And I was like, man. And yeah. so, so she held, holds everything to a higher standard. But you're gonna get better tenants. Mm-hmm. Wait, does that make me a bad tenant? <laughs> I went to that spot, no, uh, but it, but no, I love it, you know, because it, it, it encourages better reviews and everything. So you do um, pop up higher on an algorithm, mm-hmm. exactly. And then yeah, more occupancy for the owners. But it is one hundred percent like a hotel like situation. You're yeah. having to really, uh, yeah, it's completely different landscape. I will say, and I think it's going to continue to be a different landscape. And I think those that are unique are going to stay in the game, and those that have like the ability to figure out how to get four point eight stars and above. You know, and those that figure out the algorithm and all these changes we're seeing, if you're staying ahead of it, that's how you're going to stay relevant. But if you're just throwing your listing on Airbnb, you were going to get a ton of money two years ago. Today, 2024, you're going to need to put in some work to so get that. It same. sounds like it's very niche mm-hmm. specific. So it's, it's getting there. Like I said, like it, it, it was a little easier. And yeah. now we're having to really hone in on what's going to stand just out. Just can't be guess. a townhome and yeah, wherever. Exactly. It's got to have something to it. Yes. Something special. 100 percent. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And, and something special might be king size beds. You know, it might be that simple. Okay. You know, I think people I think are she's saying that to me directly. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, look, no, listen, I, I, I kept the cleaning ladies in mind. Right. So I get the pull out beds that are queen. And so I'm going to get this. That's a, a queen. That's so nice. yeah. that's all I'm doing yeah. is so they don't care what um, 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 sheets go mm-hmm. to. I was yeah. trying to help the cleaning lady. No, that's so nice. That's so <laughs> nice. You. But and, and and it was totally fine two years ago. But now we're seeing people that are searching specifically she for making me size switch beds. everything out. Yeah, I did. I, I, I asked all that that question about the niche thing because I'm not an Airbnb investor. I'm I'm a consumer. Yep. yep. So like my family and I like to visit Florida, and we saw some Airbnbs with themes like Disney theme. Yeah. And then there's a one with a Harry Potter theme yeah. that had Harry Potter themes in all these rooms. I was like, shit, take my money. <laughs> I want that <laughs> one. I want to just stay there just all. for the experience. It's an experience. And <laughs> yeah. that's what it is now more. You, you hit the nail on the head and it's, it's an experience now. It's not like yeah. just a place to stay. Great. So yeah. <laughs> No, you got the thing. <laughs> Tyler's like, gosh, damn it. I redo everything now. No, no, no. <laughs> no, her places are honestly incredible. They look great. Yeah, yeah. She's got a few in Treasure Island, Florida, and then Madeira Beach. And then she has a few here, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, All right. You want to transition over to fix and flip? I think yeah, that's the next topic. Yeah, let's talk about flipping. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm probably would. I started flipping with you, Josh, last year. I, would, I guess I'm, I'm a journeyman at this point. <laughs> You've done a lot more flips than I have, and uh, I've learned a lot from you. So those out there that are looking to flip homes, okay, mm-hmm. uh, I would say the first thing is first, where are you getting your money from to do it? Yeah, I mean, anytime you're buying a house, whether it's to live in it, to flip it, you always got to figure out what is your funding source, right? right? And maybe it is your broker, you know, who <laughs> just happens to have a decent amount of money laid around and says, "Hey, let's <laughs> let's do a let's do a rehab, right?" Yeah. So that's no lie. How I got started through uh, Tyler, me and her partnered up on a rehab and kind of like I'm out. partnering you. Yeah, right? exactly. And then, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. that's really what it is. Is you know, you find like minded people and you share the experience and you learn a lot through the process of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely finding your money source is going to be the biggest thing because you got to know how much money you got and, you know, what can you do, right? So you got a couple of different options if your broker isn't, you know, around that has a decent (laughs) amount of money that's willing to put their... Not all brokers. (laughs) That's right. JV with... (laughs) 
That's right. That's, yeah. It's Joint probably venture. less than one percent of brokers that would be like, "Oh yeah, let's just do this together. Let's make this happen." Right? I'm sure you'll do great. <laughs> yeah. What could go wrong? <laughs> so, other options are you hard could, money. Hard money, yeah. right now. Hard money, yeah. right now, today is it's pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, Depending on where you go to, a lot of people are going to be at whatever the prime rate is. For mm-hmm. those of you who don't know what the prime rate is, is it's the rate that lending institutions set to say, hey, if I'm going to loan money to someone, doesn't matter who, this is the base rate of what I want in return. Now, again, those people are getting their money most likely through the discount windows from the federal government at their interest rate. Yeah. So now the interest rates have crept up, you know, the prime rates up. Yeah. So before the rates went up, you could get a hard money loan for about 10 percent. Now that rates went up, you could probably somewhere around 13, Mm. but they're starting to come back down. Yeah. So there's that. Keep Uh, in mind. Keep Go in ahead. mind, there's there's probably somebody that you know that's in your circle that has a 401k or that's some kind of investment, something. You know, I had a, a dear friend of mine, uh, Matt, and he's like, I want you to be my agent, you know. His wife, you know, does title stuff, and I love her, but I just never worked with her title company and everything. But he's like, I know all these agents because of that, but I want to work with you. And I'm like, okay, you got to do this, you got to do this, you know, because now I know how to tell investors how to be investors, right? Um, but, uh, uh, but he kept not <laughs> reinvesting in himself, but... He was like, hold on, you told me my mom had a 401k. I didn't even know my mom had a 401k. (laughs) Not only that, you met me with her at the Cracker Barrel, and you got her to loan me that 401k to do my first property. Whoa. And I was like, don't blow that money. Reinvest in yourself. Mm -hmm. And he didn't. You know, of course, you know, side note, a few years later, drunk concert, T comes up to me. If I if I would have stayed with you, Tyler, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> Good to see you too, buddy. So four hundred one k, you can use that as leverage for the flip as, as your house borrowing yeah, against money under a mattress. Yeah. I mean, yeah. somebody you know has got even it, an IRA. You got to convince IRA. them yeah. to mm-hmm. give it to you, yeah. so you better have a plan. Right. This is how much it's going to yeah. cost. Can you borrow you against stocks, for? like for like a Morgan Stanley you, account or something? You, like you that? actually can. A lot of wealthy people use mm-hmm. their stock portfolio as leverage in order to borrow money against it in order to do whatever they may do maybe they want to buy another property kind of like elon musk borrowed against tesla to buy there twitter go. there you go okay. prime example right there so <laughs> a big level <laughs> the mo and he did a lot of his was company stock that he got from his company anyway so it was his own company and it's just another way of leveraging Perfect. to get the money that you want in order to take on the next project whatever it is so now you could do a conventional loan as well, but you got to be so real. Twenty five percent, isn't it? Yeah, you got to be real careful on what you're doing with that as well, because just because of if it's a house that needs a lot of work, the insurance that you're going to need is different than just getting regular homeowners insurance. You're going to need like a build a risk policy. Hmm. Another thing I would say is if you're if you're going to get like in a that general liability, right? General liability, got to have that. <laughs> yeah. So you got that insurance. You got to have the money source, and then the next thing I would say is having your uh, labor and your materials dialed in. Uh, well, I think before we get there, you got to figure out how do you find the houses because that is probably the number one question that everybody yeah, wants to know. Deals are not easy to come yeah. by, and not most, in this market. Anyway. Most people are going to tell Watch you how they're getting them either. Yeah. <laughs> so, no. but. Here, here's what I'll say. We got say. a new casino in the area. There's somebody going to have a gambling problem. I'm telling you. That's when you swoop in. Let me buy your house from you. And then you go, well, no, no. It's not a bad oh. idea. It's not. Don't tell you me there's no deals. outside the box. <laughs> but no, I mean, for most people, though, who don't have a casino nearby, um, you, you know, you got the MLS. Uh, You can partner with a lot of agents who do a lot of investments or work with investors. A lot of it's networking, just networking your way into it. You know, if you surround yourself with other like-minded individuals, properties will come around if you're just there at the right time. I would also say uh, a lot of these Facebook groups for investors, a lot of uh, wholesalers, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but they'll throw their properties on this Facebook page. Uh, groups and say, hey, I got this property, 123 Main Street, ARV after repair value is this after you flip it. Uh, only you only have 15,000. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah. That's yeah. more like 50 yeah. grand. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. say, we'll, we'll, always run your own numbers. We'll definitely talk about that on the, on the, on the next segment. But 
in general, that's how you're going to mm. find most of your properties yeah. is networking, MLS, and by off chance, if you know someone who just lost it big at the casino, you might be able to swoop in and help them out. Oh, God. That's so sharky. <laughs> but then we get into contractors, that's... labor, material costs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the big thing when you're getting into doing the rehabs. You got to... Carrying keep, interest taxes. Ca- carrying just, costs. Yeah. Yep, you yeah. got to keep all of those things locked tight with a budget and know what the budget is. And it's always a struggle mm-hmm. to stay within the budget. There's always something that comes up. Every time you open a wall, every time you fix something, there's something else that's connected to it. But you know what? You, Josh, you say it within the budget more than anybody I've ever seen in my whole life. Like it's, a, it's a, like he it's like the 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 number to beat, <laughs> yeah. and he does so great. It, it's well, it's because you know most you, of the time. you you try yeah most of the time. Yeah. You, there's gonna be things that you can't foresee, mm-hmm. yeah. and a good rule of thumb is is to always add an extra ten percent uh, as you know a contingency, if you will, to say hey. We might have some crawl space damage that we don't know about that yeah. we're not going to get, you know, we're not going to find out until afterwards. So 10% of your total cost? Total cost. So if you're like, hey, I'm budgeting 55000 for this rehab, go ahead and tack another 5500 onto that just in case. Because worst case scenario is 5500 back to you in profit if you don't touch it. But if you got something that comes up, you got some money set aside. Now, it may not always be enough to cover it. You know, you might tear down a wall and find out that there's no footer on the front or the back wall. Oh. But yeah, you, you know, all about that yeah. One. So you just never know what oh, might you're happen. To that deal, yeah. No, I mean, why we gotta keep bringing up shit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you just never know what might happen it's not all in a rehab, roses, right? <laughs> no, no. And we try to keep it real here and tell you the real reality because yeah. there's a lot of shows out there that will tell you it's all roses. <laughs> you can find them on HGTV. Yeah, and you can uh, also sign up to their uh, training program. Program too, and they'll teach you how to flip and flop houses. Yeah, it's like fifteen thousand. Just give me fifteen thousand, I'll teach you how to flip houses. I <laughs> <laughs> go watch that HGTV program. <laughs> so you take the money and give it to them. Yeah. Oh uh, my goodness. It's not always that easy. No. Yeah, and I mean, ever the big the the next biggest thing is is the management of the worker bees, right? And yeah, we had to put cameras in the property because yeah. tools come up missing, yeah. materials come up missing, yeah. people don't yeah. show up to work. Like, hey, where you at? And I'm watching them on the camera phone. He's yeah. like, ah, oh, I'm right here. I'm I'm working. I was like, are you sure? I haven't seen you walk in the front door. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, I, I had to go get lunch or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah they'll owners. bullshit you, the workers. They, yeah. they sure will. So, you know, they don't, for them, and the other thing is, is they never want the job to end. Never. You are their job, right? right? And the minute that project ends, they got to go find more work. So they never want the project to end. You got to be able to say, hey, look, this is it. This is all we're doing. We'll fix the rest on the pick row, right? Whenever that comes along, once right. we get an offer, we know it's on a contract. We'll take care of the rest of this. But the workers, they never want to see a project end because you are their livelihood. While they're on that project, they know they're getting paid every Friday or whatever your agreement yeah. is. And so, therefore, they know that they're dependent on you for that income every week. Yeah, and I would also add this, and we can talk about this on another – we have plans to talk about this on another podcast, but – Whenever you have workers working for you, be weary of uh, them volunteering to do uh, special jobs for you for almost seemingly free. Because usually there's always something like, for example, hey, don't worry, I'll pick up all the supplies for you at Home Depot. And they end up buying 30 percent more than what they need. They go and then once the job's done, they'll take those materials back and then get a Home Depot gift card and they'll just add it to their, uh, you know, bottom line off yeah. your dollar off your dime yeah because i mean they could go take that gift card sell it to somebody else it is essentially cash or they could go buy tools that they might need on their next project that you're not going to need yeah so mm-hmm. labor material definitely have that dialed in you got those carrying costs not only your electric bill makes you turn on that hvac system you don't want it too hot or too cold in there <laughs> yeah well we talked about that already yeah. they, you got to watch the contractors especially if you're in warm environments in the summer yeah they'll crank up the ac yeah, they want to be cold right it's <laughs> hot outside they want to be cold and they don't care that they're cutting towel and and saw dust is getting up into the hvac system which will uh destroy your uh hvac motor which costs about 
what was it, seventeen hundred to two thousand, something like that, to replace two thousand dollars to replace the motor. Yeah, and all bunch of gunk and everything got into the air filters, and it choked the system, and that's what it does. It blows it up because contractors uh, want that AC nice and cold. They wanted a refrigerator in there while they're working. So you have to show up to the property. You got to be there to witness what's going on. Mm. Uh, And like Josh was saying, they never want the job to end because they will be seventy percent done with one project. And they'll say, well, what's next? Like, how about you get done with this one first and we'll talk about it? You know, but uh, it's time management, too, because if you're doing hard money, yep. you know, that bill, that interest only payment comes due every month. Mm-hmm. So if you have a bunch of contractors out there wanting, not wanting the job to end, that's going to cost you another 3000 3000 2000 whatever it is, whatever it is that you, you're borrowing and whatever your deal is. Um. They don't care if you have no profits at the end. They just care about getting paid at the end. So labor and materials have that dialed in. And then the next thing I would say uh, is, we, I kind of we already covered this, but risk. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of risk. Yeah. Like there's there's so many risks on so many different levels. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things you got to do is just you got to have an exit strategy, right? What mm-hmm. happens if this house doesn't sell? Yeah. Can we rent it? Can we Airbnb it? You know, what are the other options that we got with this property in the event it doesn't sell? Because, you know, right now, the last year, we've kind of experienced somewhat of a downward turn in the real estate market with interest rates elevated. So it's been a lot harder to move some properties, but you got to have some type of a backup plan in the event that the initial plan doesn't pan out. Um, But there's also the risk of workers getting hurt on the job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a, you know, you obviously want to have that general liability insurance. But you also want to know that the people who are working on the project have insurance themselves. So that way that they're covered themselves. Right. So I guess that brings us to the next topic. So that's basically flips. It's uh, nothing hardly ever goes to plan. Always over budget. (laughs) Uh, be on job, make sure things are getting done on time, set a time and set a budget, be very, very stringent to that timeline and, su- and budget because every, we actually, we brought, I broke it down one time we were doing the interest only payments on a hard money. I said, we are getting charged $76 a day. Yep. Every day this house mm-hmm. isn't sold, it, char- it costs us $76 a day. Yeah. And I would tell that to some of the things like, why is this taking so long? You know, this cost me $76 a day before this house didn't sell. They don't give a fuck. No, they don't because they think you're rich. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's just an like, interest. That's like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. carrying costs. Yeah. No, you're, you're my employer. You're rich. You're never going to go, go bust or anything. So that's just how, that's the mindset of the workers. They're like, oh, you got yeah. it. You're rich. What kind of cameras are you guys putting in there? Um, like, Because a lot of them you know, require Wi-Fi or whatever. We, we have yeah. a ring camera system. So uh, it's, a, it's a contractor system. It's kind of like orange in color. And it's got its own Wi-Fi system built yep. in. It's got mm-hmm. a lock on. It, it if uh, you take it, it'll it'll sound off the alarm. It'll let us know oh, on our cool. phones. Uh, we can look at the cameras anytime. We have motion sensors on certain doors, like yep. where we want to put the motion sensors. Like he's supposed to be working on the bathroom. I want to know every time he comes in the bathroom. Motion sensor. Yep, he's on. Motion That's sensor. That's like prison. I don't know if that would work. <laughs> no, I, I mean, off, I'm checking in. When, you, right? when you're not there, yeah, we're and not going working. to that extreme of putting it in the bathroom. By the way, but yeah. <laughs> So, like, you know, at least have it pointing. I mean, it's you you can use it to track the workers, but you also got to make sure that no one's going to break in and steal all of the the hard work. I mean, I can't tell you how many sensors on the windows, too. So if they open them, it would come off. What kind of areas are you guys rehabbing it? It it doesn't even matter because, I mean, there's there's areas that I've had work done in and things got stolen and you would literally the next door neighbor is like, I seen a truck pull up and they (laughs) just took it a lighting kit. Yeah, that was we lost a lighting package a whole lighting package that's one but i seen uh, some of my investors they had all of the appliances taken out of the house mm, i saw that on one and too. you know people see these houses listed on the market they're like oh they're nice and you know they just help themselves what's cool though i haven't heard so many reports of the theft and like the the, the vandalism or anything like i used to so yeah. I, I love that no matter what neighborhood you're in. Yeah, and I mean that yeah. was the that theft of that appliance package was mm-hmm. like nineteen. 
Mm-hmm. I think, you know, yeah. there's been some extra money, you know, Those that's been facts. thrown around <laughs> into the economy here, you know, thank you to our government. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, now that that money's starting to dry out, um, you know, you may see a return to the old ways. Mm-hmm. Might have put a cage on that HVAC unit outside. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> somebody might walk off with it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I wonder, do you think a house with a cage around the HVAC system would fare well I as an Airbnb? I think if we bedazzle it, maybe, <laughs> and decorate it well, in some way. rhinestones on it. Yeah. People, yeah. Well, we obviously wouldn't market that. Look, you know, yeah. The door would show yeah. up and just probably look the other way. They wouldn't be there. All right, let's talk about wholesaling. All right. All right. Uh, I've only done, like, a few wholesale deals. Um, so wholesaling basically is... Uh, for those out there is uh, you don't even have to have a really a real estate license to do this, but uh, you find a property that's distressed, a uh, homeowner in distress that wants to sell it for usually a cash offer. Usually the house has some issues with it that uh, wouldn't allow it to be listed on the open market and qualify for traditional funding means. Um, so they have to sell it, you know, cash as is. Okay. So usually what that wholesaler will do is they'll put that house under contract, say, I'm going to buy it. But uh, what they're doing is they're going to resell that property to an investor, a flipper, like we just talked about, usually. And uh, they will do a markup. You know, let's say uh, they put that house under contract for 150000 and they found a flipper that said they'll pay one seventy. Well, that $20,000 difference between the two becomes the assignment fee and that's the profit that the wholesaler will pocket you said you've only done this a few times or one time no a few times okay i was gonna say you sound like you've done it a lot okay well, that's exactly the process <laughs> okay <laughs> well yeah so um usually you know a wholesaler when you see we buy homes cash it's a little generic corrugated cardboard signs that you see posted in neighborhoods or near shopping centers or something like that. Intersections. Intersections, yep. So they want you to call that number. Usually it's a Google Voice number because uh, they don't want that number to be tracked to their personal cell phones because there's a lot of Sydney ordinances will actually fine you per sign if they find out who you are. So it's usually a Google Voice number or some other burner phone line. Anyway... That's what they're doing. Some of them have cash. A lot of them do not. Their cash comes when they take your property and find another buyer and collect the difference where they can upsell it. So they're playing a real estate agent. They're playing like real estate agent. They're supposed to have a license when they do that. They get around it somehow. I'm not an attorney. I don't see how it's legal or not legal. I don't know. We'd have to talk to... Mm -hmm. Perhaps, you know, some real estate attorney we might have on later on. We might ask ask him that question. It's probably a disclosure. You know, if you were an agent and you were doing it, you would have to disclose that yeah. you are a licensed salesperson. So I think that's the loophole is, is that if you are an agent, you have to disclose that you're an agent when you do it. If you're not an agent, you don't have to disclose it. Yeah, I but, would... I would say to the home buyers and home sellers out there, and I'm talking from an agent perspective because, and and you you feel the same way I'm sure, and every you know, and sure I'm sure you do, Tyler as well. Is our interests are always going to be for the home buyer and the home and and the and the home seller. Uh, I would always say um, ask questions about that. Somebody who's going to buy your house cash, you know, do you have cash, or do you not? <laughs> <laughs> and get a proof of funds, yeah. yeah. But you know, you can get a proof of funds from anybody. You That's know? true. I anybody. could have, yeah, I could have Tyler write me a proof of funds right now, and she'd be like, "Here, yeah, he's good to go, three million dollars." And that's it. some people will confirm it, and some people, oh, okay, yeah. that's okay, good. You're it, good. Lo- it looks like it's on a nice letterhead. Yep, yeah. that's yeah. it. As long as it looks legit. So it's hard mm-hmm. really to tell. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. It's called make a phone call and like, you know, track it. You know, but mm-hmm. if it looks pretty, a lot of people, it's just easier. OK, that looks legit because you don't want to look like somebody who doesn't know any better yeah. if it's a, a bona fide um, <laughs> proof of funds or not. Yeah. So um, but if you're OK with somebody, you know, 
selling your property off to somebody else and collecting the difference, then why don't you just hire a real estate agent at that point? Well, what about the wholesalers that don't want the sellers to know about the wholesale fee? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you just double close it. Right, which is not always What's so a double easy. close? Well, a double close is like this, right? Let's say <laughs> that you have this house that you want to sell. Mm-hmm. I say, hey, Robert, I'll take care of it, man. I'll give you what you want. You say, yeah, I want 150. I say, okay, all right, I'll give you 150. Okay. Then I go to Sierra and I'm like, hey, Sierra, I got this deal right here. You know, um, I got under contract for 150. I went to Tyler. Tyler says she'll give me 170 for it. There's $20,000. If you fund it, I'll split the difference with you, or I'll give you something. I might give you, you know, some places do one, yeah, some places do one percent. What they call transactional funding, which you can actually look that up online. There's a whole bunch of places to do it. I love those. But you basically pay them a fee to borrow their money for short term. So then I close on the house using Sierra's money, me and her work out our agreement. And then at the same time, I turn around once I close on it, and you close, I close. Then I turn around and close with Tyler. And we can do this all in the same day or maybe You're a day You're allowed to apart. do that too because isn't there something about recording the deed and then recording there, the deed? There is. There is. But you could do a same day recording on the first one and file that one. And then basically you and I, we signed ours in the evening. So it's been, you know, submitted for recording. So we're trusting the people that... And yeah, we're trusting the attorneys and the in. title companies. <laughs> okay. Now, some attorneys will be like, no, we need to wait 24 hours till we get the notification back from the city, just in case there's some type of encumbrance, you know, that comes up that we weren't aware of, something that pops up. So is there risk? Yes, but there's risk in all real estate investing. Yeah, I'll play devil's advocate yeah. now. So I'll flip over to the pro wholesaler side right quick. So... Um, how do you get started? So do you necessarily have to have a bunch of money in the bank? No. So what you got to have to do is have hustle, have grind. So the cheapest way to do it, because here's what you can do to get wholesale leads. I mean, you can buy them and you can pay as much as, what was that one we were talking about? 40000 a month? Yeah. yeah. That's like the franchise fees. Yeah. You can yeah. you can get that far into it or you can, you can it's just going to cost you gas money and shoe leather. Yeah. Is uh, start door knocking uh, homes. You you, uh, you go into certain neighborhoods. You look at uh, properties that uh, have their grass grown really tall. Uh, perhaps the house looks like in disrepair. Knock on the door. If somebody's there, they answer. Ask them the question. You know, uh, and see if they were looking to sell the property. They might. They might be in dire straits and they're looking to sell it. At that place, at that time, put it under contract and uh, find yourself a buyer. Now, where can you find a buyer? There's there's a lot of different ways. You can use a real estate agent. Uh, there's an investor agent, and then they have a uh, usually a network of other investors they work with. They can get that property out from under you as quick as possible and close in 10 days or you know, or 30 days, or whatever it is. Uh, or um, you could possibly uh, put it in something like the Facebook Marketplace and do like we see, like where they advertise, look, we got a uh, – Flipping opportunity here. This house is going to be worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars ARV after repair value, and it's only going to 15, cost. Fifteen thousand repairs. It's going to cost fifteen thousand <laughs> repairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifteen thousand repairs. Yeah, bullshit. That's it's never, never fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Get out of here. Whatever their <laughs> estimate of repairs, multiply it times two. That's usually what the real repairs are. <laughs> At minimum, so, yeah. At least, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, where else can they get uh, wholesale leads? Uh, they could get them from uh, the city. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch. There's of a ways. bunch of different ways. Yeah, you man. you yeah. could go look up vacant Casino. properties. You could do vacant properties. You could do properties that have utilities shut off. You could do pre foreclosure houses. There's a lot of different ways that you can tax target delinquent. these tax liens. Um, you could even do probate leads. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do this. A lot of these things just require your time at the city pulling records, finding out. Who's just went into probate, you know, even in a divorce situation, sometimes those people are, are, you know, in dire straits and just like, look, I'm done with this person. I want to just split ways and we're out like and so they'll settle for like a cash offer. Um, But once you get the house, though, you got to make sure that your contract has some language in there that allows you to inspect the house. Mm-hmm. Because that you is contingency. Your, yeah, yeah, you gotta have that contingency for inspections because that's your opportunity or your gateway to bring your end buyer in the front door so that way that they can see the house. If you don't have that in there, you're probably gonna have a hard time selling the house because a lot of people are a little bit, you know, 
cautious about just buying they sight want to assess unseen. The risk. Yeah, they want to assess yeah. the risk. I don't care how many pictures you take. I don't care how many videos you take. I want to walk in that house and I want to see it myself because I need to lay eyes on it and be able to say what it's going to cost me to do this work. Because mm-hmm. we don't believe you when you say it's 15 That's 000. right. We 100%. <laughs> so if you're a wholesaler out there, you're just getting into the business. Don't lie, because most of the investors who are really investors will be like, no, I'm not buying that. 15000 doesn't go far anywhere, any day. So That's not even lipstick. Yeah. fifteen grand. So, all right. Well, I think that everybody pretty much that are listening or, or viewing us got a good idea on how to get started in doing the investment game, kind of have some insights from those in the business and... Uh, and whatnot. Does anybody else around the table have anything they would like to add? Yeah, I'll just add one more thing on the whole selling sure. while we're on it still. If you just don't have any other opportunity to get rid of the property, you got it under contract, just find a local real estate agent, have them listed as a owner, uh, contract owner, put it in the MLS. You'll get tons of people. Make sure you have that contingency in there for an inspection. Do your inspection, give yourself a three hour window, bring as many investors in the door as you can and get that property sold. And just in case you want to get as long as closing date as possible, your end buyer, you're going to have a short date. But if you don't find that buyer fast enough, you need to have as much time as possible. But absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. If you like this video, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Like the video. Please leave us a comment below. Let, let us know how you, what you thought about the video. If you are on Apple or uh, Spotify or any other streaming services, please follow us for more information. And with that, thanks for walk, watching. See you soon.